Hi, it's Marcus. Today I'm going to talk to you about my medical school application journey and how I got from basically not knowing where I was going to apply to having three offers and on track to study medicine at Cambridge University. So my medicine application started way back at the beginning of year 12, where I had to figure out where I wanted to apply. And in retrospect, looking back to where I decided and how I decided where I wanted to apply, I realized that there was one main thing that I should have based my decision on, which I didn't, which is apply where you would like to live. Now with Cambridge and with Edinburgh, I applied there because I really liked the town. Cambridge, I knew I would love the atmosphere and the town itself. And Edinburgh, I had already been there on a holiday. So I knew sort of what it was like and that the whole feel of it would just suit me. However, with Imperial and King's, I applied there just because I didn't really know many of the other universities. And so I kind of already knew them and I knew that they were prestigious. So I put them down. In retrospect, I realized that I shouldn't have applied there since after going to London so many times for interviews, I know that I would not like to live there in the future. Now this doesn't apply to everyone and many people do love London and that's fine. If that sort of living suits you, then apply there by all means. But my main tip is to apply where you would most like to live because this is ultimately six years of your life. And if you don't go somewhere where you would enjoy being, then university is gonna be much tougher than it has to be. So moving forward into the summer of 2019 between my first and second year of the IB, I did my UCATs. So I did my UCAT at the end of August and I scored a total of 2,770 in the UCAT with an SJT of band 2, which is okay. I was happy with it. I was originally aiming for 2,800, so I wasn't too far off, which I was happy about. However, I do believe that I spent far too little time studying for the UCAT and this leads me to my main tip about the UCAT, which is take at least four weeks to study the UCAT very intensely. I did not do this and I do believe that I could have scored better if I had been more religious in my studying towards the UCAT as well as spent more time actually doing it. So for the UCAT, I did use the medic portal to study. I paid for the 25 pound extension of it, which was definitely worth it. And I would recommend it since it gave me a detailed rundown of all of the different question types I was doing and how I was performing in those different question types, as well as allowing me to practice individual sections of the UCAT. However, it didn't really have any full practice tests nor any detailed marking of practice tests which was worrying to me since the time management was one of my biggest issues with the UCAT and not having full practice tests to study with simultaneous marking was quite a big issue for me. Despite enjoying the medic portal I do think that there was some things which they could have improved upon. This meant that I used other resources to do full tests such as the official UCAT website, link is in the description. Although the problem with this is that there wasn't a score that was given to me, so I didn't really know where I was at and I didn't really have any way of tracking my progress, which was one of my biggest downfalls in the UCAT. So moving on to the BMAT, I did the October session on the 31st of October for the BMAT, where I got 7.1, 6.3 and 4A on the BMAT. And the BMAT was much, much better than the UCAT, both in how I felt doing the exam, as well as the actual outcome of the scores. I feel like this is because I poured my heart and soul in studying for the BMAT, whereas I didn't really do that for the UCAT. My main tip for the BMAT is to track your progress. So the way I did this is I signed up for the Medify BMAT course, which I would totally recommend since it really allowed me to track my progress throughout the course and focus on the specific question types which I really needed to improve since it gave me a percentage of the questions that I got right for each of the different question types which I found invaluable. I also made a spreadsheet of my progress to track the different full tests that I was doing so I think I did pretty much all of the tests that were available on the Medify website and I felt like this would really help me figure out where I was at and what I should be aiming for as well as how to manage myself in the timed conditions of the exam and how to basically do the exam. So moving on to the personal statement. Now the personal statement is a very tricky piece of text since writing about yourself is just weird and I hated it. I will be making a video dedicated just to writing an Oxbridge as well as medical personal statement later on so keep tuned for that and if you haven't already subscribe and keep those notifications on for when I do publish that video. So my personal statement was absolute trash in the beginning. It was chunky and it didn't flow and it just wasn't a good piece of text. I tried to work on it, I did the best that I could and I just couldn't get the hang of it. So the night before I had to submit it to the school, I asked my sister 
who is now studying medicine in Portugal to read it. Um, and I also read her personal statement for when she applied to the UK. And there I realized how to write a personal statement and how terrible mine really was compared to hers. So from there, she helped me and gave me some tips on how to really put everything together and merge the different sections so that I had a coherent piece of text. So even though I was ready to just hand in my personal statement as it was, I didn't. And I'm really grateful that I didn't. So this leads me on to my tip on the personal statement, which is do as many drafts as you need. Some people do 30 drafts and that's okay because the personal statement is something that is really hard to write and it's not something that you're going to get on the first try. And asking different people to read it and asking their opinion on it is really useful. So take as many drafts as you need and change it as much as you want because it, with each change it will for sure be getting better and better and better over time. And a good personal statement is really key to distinguishing yourself from other applicants who have the same grades and same extracurriculars and same pretty much everything as you. So yeah, take as many drafts as you need. Further on in 2019, I got my first interview, which was for Cambridge, then I got King's and Edinburgh, and then finally I got Imperial. So my experience with the interviews was mixed, where Cambridge was highly stressful, although somewhat enjoyable, whereas King's and Edinburgh, I felt super at ease and I actually really enjoyed those interviews. And then finally Imperial, I didn't like the interview. I felt that the MMI was far too short and didn't really allow me to go in depth about myself or about things that I wanted to talk about. I think the main reason that I succeeded in both the Cambridge as well as the King's and Edinburgh interview was that I was just myself and I tried to put across a genuine feel. I didn't go all stiff and formal and I rather tried to act like a person rather than just a number applicant or a number on a paper. And so that's my main tip, just be yourself and prove to the examiner that that you're a genuine caring person that will make a difference in the lives of your patients and with the people that you're working with. So in the end, after having gotten three offers and being rejected from Imperial, I had to finally pick and make my choices. So here, setting aside the whole grades aspect of making your choices and assuming that all choices are available to you, I would say pick where you are most comfortable. So I felt really comfortable both in Cambridge and in Edinburgh where everyone there made me feel at home and everyone was super nice. This was slightly in contrast to King's and Imperial, where everything was a bit more formal and people weren't as friendly and as warm. So for that reason, I put Cambridge as my firm and Edinburgh as my insurance, because those were the places which I really felt at home. And that is my advice to you. Pick where you feel most comfortable. I mean, obviously other factors come into it. For example, Cambridge and Edinburgh are both very research-oriented degrees, which does appeal to me. However, the main factor that comes into your decision of picking a university should be where you feel that you will enjoy it the most, because ultimately that is the most important thing. So that was my medical school application journey, and I hope it was somewhat interesting to you, and maybe you learned something with the tips along the way. If you found value in this video, then consider subscribing and I'll see you next time. There's no stopping it now, there's no facing the heat. Can't fight it, I'm dropping down, I'm down on my knees.